Okay. Okay. Welcome to episode four of the Schlock cast. I came up with that name. It's very exciting. Um, it's a YouTube interview show designed to highlight the talented individuals working on the upcoming Space Warp comics collection. Understand it's a collection if it's um, written by the same person, not an anthology. There you go. It's a bit of information for you. Yeah, fair, cool. <laughs> each, uh, each story is written by Pat Mills. And this week we have the artist of the story Executioners. Uh, my buddy, Gareth Slighthome. Hello, Gareth. How are you doing? Hi, uh, good. good. <laughs> How's the weather up there? Is it boiling today? It's really warm, yeah. It's really warm. Yeah, it's been pretty unbearable in my... Uh, I, I hide in the loft most of the day, and it's been pretty unbearable <laughs> up here. Um, I suppose we might do a little bit of an origin with you, because I know we've been buddies for... How long have we known each other for? Three, four years, I suppose, now? Yeah, so maybe, uh, since, um, since I first cottoned on to you guys on Awesome Comics and... And then started to jump in on the Facebook site, I suppose, and chat. Yeah, I remember a, a mortifying moment when I met you and uh, your good lady at the uh, Travelling Man in Leeds. And your missus just said to me, I know your voice. And, oh, God, what on <laughs> earth have I said? Yeah, very good. So what's your what's your sort of comics origin story? Yeah, that's a good day. What's your comics origin story, Gareth? Um, uh, um, I read comics a lot when I was a kid. I had a Canadian cousin who used to bring comics over, you know, so I got into comics that way. Then Marvel and DC, them. that sort of thing? or Yeah, yeah, a lot of Marvel, basically, and, and, and stuff like that. Um, Ghost Rider and um, Black Panther and that sort of stuff. And um, loved all that. Um, obviously, there was the Star Wars comics when they came out. I remember those, very strange. Didn't, didn't seem to remember them relating to the movies that much. Yeah, I remember thinking, how weird is that? Because it was that, well, same with that Green Rabbit that is like a bounty hunter or something. Yeah. Very then, strange. Yeah. Action, warlord, commander, all of the kind of good stuff. And then I, I must have abandoned it for a few years and got into sort of like the Conan novels and a lot, sort of like the pulp um, collections and that thing that were printed, reprinted in the 60s and stuff like that. And, um, and then slowly I, I had a nephew who got me back into 2000 AD. So looking at that sort of stuff. But it wasn't until I was, um, I worked at an archaeology unit and the, one of the guys there, the, my my boss, yeah, um, Ian Beck, he was making his own comics and he had a mail order list um, of, of people that bought his book and he sent them out. And so he was doing this kind of comedy Beowulf sort of story back in the day. And um, Oh, really? That's cool. When about was that? What sort of year was that? Can you remember? <laughs> that would have been sort of, I suppose... Maybe 87, 88, 88, okay. that sort of, sort of period. Yeah. Um, and one of the other guys I was working with, Dave Chapman, was making his own comics and he was just photocopying them to reproduce them, putting them out there. And they kind of got me back into stuff. And that, for, through them, I read Watchmen, um, uh, Dark Knight, um, Ronin, all of that kind of stuff, and Love nice. and Rockets and all that kind of stuff. And, and then I tried to do some comic stuff when I was at uni, but I was just too distracted. I wanted to do everything. I wanted to do stuff in metal work and, and, and just a whole yeah. bunch of stuff. And I, I did animation in the end because it amalgamated loads of stuff together. And then so I you just, studied you studied animation, did you? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, cool. I didn't know that. I, okay. Really? So I was kind of, it was more kind of sculptural, kind of weird, spank myri influenced stuff, I suppose, my stuff. But um, oh, nice. And we had a great comic shop in Norwich, Abstract Sprocket, and. Um, we, you know, oh, you're an orange boy. I never knew you were an orange boy. Well, I, I, I grew up in Hull, and I'm back in Hull. Well, I grew yeah. up near Hull and, and back in Hull now. Are you at University of East Anglia, was it you went to? Or? No, I was at the art school in the city centre. So, ah. so I, did, I was at the art school there. That was great. I was there ten and a half years in Norwich and loved it. And I still go back yeah. quite quite occasionally and everything. And um, so, like I said, we were in Abstract Sprocket a lot, and that's when I kind of like um, picked up Sandman and um, I, you know, reading my Hellblazers for the first time and all that kind of stuff. And so that was my 90s experience. And then, you know, work just gets in the way. And as much yeah. as I wanted to make comics, and I was make, trying to make comics, I did this kind of like weird, which you can find online if you look up, up on my DeviantArt and stuff like that. You can see like a little Mobius inspired comic that I did. And oh, nice. Um, I've not seen that. I'll have to have a look. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's silly. And, <laughs> you know, just overly detailed and, and stuff. But it was it was years later, it was Thought Bubble really that did it and getting back into it. And my missus was just saying, you can do this, why don't you do it? And I goes, well, I haven't got a comic. And that was that. So okay, uh, I basically booked a table without having a comic. And then over the summer break, um, on my downtime from being an art school tutor, I basically made a comic and then took it along and that was that. Wow. So what was that comic? What that was, was uh, Indian Fighter. Right, which okay. Is, 
part of my Cthulhu had stuff. So it was like a, a, a Cthulhu uh, mythos inspired down and dirty Western, really. Nice. Uh, weird, yeah. square, weird square format um, because, because I didn't know what I was doing. And I did the entire thing in my sketchbook rather than on paper and or board. And then just simply scanned in the sketchbook and then turned it into a comic book. And it was, it was great fun. Nice, man. Nice. I think there needs to be more Westerns sometimes, you know. Yeah, I, well, do. I love a good Western. My, my dad was a big Western fan. Uh, Western yeah. and some of the big biblical epics. And, and so I think I, 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 like, I, I like that kind of like hugeness of some of that stuff and the big vistas. And, and when Raw you look canvas, at Murphy, man, Raw canvas, stuff, yeah. yeah. Fab and, you know, El Topo and all that lot. So. Oh, yeah. You're talking my language there. So I know yeah. you've just said, oh, it was overly detailed. And you're known as a man for his detail, I might add. Um, in a yeah. good way, in a desperately good way. So, um, what's um, who are your sort of artistic influences now? Is anyone? So, I suppose maybe, it's, maybe firstly, or yeah. Well, I, I was a big fan, big fan of him, and um, and you know some of the other European artists and stuff like that. Philip Druyer, um, yep. obviously, super crazy detailed and, and bonkers with it. Um, <laughs> so, so some of that stuff, and then there was all the kind of like the Gods in Chaos books by N. K. Bilal and. And all of that. So I remember reading all that stuff. That was cool. But like I said, you know, I, I, Hernand, I, I get torn. I want to. I want to do more simplistic stuff. And I love, you know, you know, books like Cabalistics or sort of like you know, yeah. work like um, sort of like Inferno with um, you know, sort of like the, that kind of just really raw black and white stuff. I've got yeah, like, was is Inferno David Lloyd? Am I thinking of the right book there? No, no. It's um, it was um, oh god, I've, um. Mike Carey wrote it, and it was uh, Gados. Mike oh, Gados. right, okay, right, yeah. And you know, like Cabalistics as well that they did in two thousand AD. That sort of like raw black and white stuff. Yeah. And and, I, and I'm a big fan of Alex Toth, and just like how simple he can oh. get it. And then when I sit down and I try and do it, and then suddenly there's just flurry of baroque detail because I think it's like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's an addiction. Funny enough, there's a few of us, me, myself. Um, Russell Olsen and Johnny Cannon and a few people are pushing the the Toth thing at the moment again. And he's, uh, I'm hoping people are going to realise because he's, he's not as known as he should be. I think maybe between fans as opposed to I've got, artists. You I've, know. Got big, I've got the big collections and they're just oh, awesome. Do you know like what I mean? Steps. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Some of my favourite bits are just like he's got these like there's pages where there's just like sketches of like tiny little like camper vans and like aircraft taking off and and they're all in these tiny little bubbles and it's like he's trying to plan something out when you look at it the page itself is so beautiful it could be this kind of abstract comic yeah and, yeah amazing and, and that's kind of yeah so anything like that i mean you know i'm a huge mike mcnola fan and yeah you know so cool so the question i ask everyone on this sorry babes what do you say that's good yeah good there we go easy the, uh, so the question I ask everyone on this is, what was your road to Space Warp? How did it, because you were one of the first people taken on board, weren't you, I think? I, I honestly don't know if I was. Um, and I, I think, I don't know exactly what the road was, but I think it, it kind of <laughs> was. Like, I came down to London for the Awesome Comics um, charity event. The 200th, yeah, yeah. You gave away some cracking artwork that I couldn't bribe Mr. Sheaf to get me to win. I tried my yeah. best. <laughs> I brought down a lot of stuff, and yeah. it, one of the images was a slain image I, uh, yeah. that I'd done. And I believe either you or somebody might have shown Pat Mills it, I think. Yeah. I think, I think that's you're right. what I kind of heard or something. Yeah, I think and right, then man, yeah. there, I mean, it was just like I got an email and out of the blue, and you kind of just think you've been somebody's joshing with you. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> that's all right, is it? You know, it's like somebody that you read when you were, uh, you know, just loving those kind of like 2000 AD comics and stuff like that, and slain and and everything. And yeah, it's just crazy to receive that email through the post. So, oh, mate, I'd, lo I'd love to see you on a slain. I've got to tell you, yeah, <laughs> or even ABC Warriors. Yeah. You kill on ABC Warriors, man. Yeah, it's big robots and monsters, isn't it? I mean, that's yeah. that's that's. Uh, that's the joy of it, isn't it? So. Bread and butter, baby, yeah. So, all right, so what we're going to do is I've got some um, script. I'm going to tap, because you and I are both shite at computers. I'd like to say that rude word here now. Um, so oh, I'm going to try. 
I work on it for long and I'm still rubbish at it. <laughs> so I'm going to try and screen share. We've got some images um, which we're allowed to show. I've cleared it with Lisa. They're allowed sure. to show of um, some of your work on it. And if you stand by, listener, yeah. hang on. Okay. Uh, can you see that, dude? I can, yeah. There you go. So did you want to explain what that page was? So we've got uh, um, the executioners top left here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's basically the, the opening, you know, page, I suppose. We're sort of like in media res, as they say in D&D, sort of like straight into the action. And uh, yeah, uh, we've got the two executioners, which are um, the future cops, basically tracking down sort of like villains wearing this kind of garb that protects them from the types of villains that they come into contact with because they they seem to be numerous and they seem to be have different reactions to sort of like being captured or shot at so they right. wear the, these these apron type um outfits with these kind of almost like uh leather look knight's helmets on and yeah. uh, and then step out into the world and track down corporate baddies and stuff like that so cool so there's almost like um a butcher's ironmonger's leather apron yeah, type yeah. Of thousand yeah i get you yeah it, yeah it has kit in it it looks more simple than it, it is and in, in the storytelling there's it has things that it can do and stuff like that and, and uh, it has a voice of its own that can talk back to the, the executioners and stuff like that yeah i get you so the um the now legendary uh video of Pat looking through your design work um, is, is done the rounds for a, um, a good six months now, I'm going to say. But so what you did is he asked you to design them and you sent him, what, 30 options? Something like that, was it? Something similar? Well, I, I, I wanted to play with the different helmets, the, the, the sort of like the, the, the headgear and helmets and sort of like eyepieces. And then there was the aprons and what they look like at the back. And we kind of yeah. do what the guys might look like when they're out of uniform. So there was some stuff where I made them look kind of 1940s, kind of like detective-like, and yeah. and then trying trying to get the the kind of characters down and and make them how they wanted them to appear and and stuff like that. And I, I think because my dad's design background, because I was a, I was a theme park designer for years, and so you tend to in the concept art kind of phase, you generate a lot of work, and then it's selected from. And I still kind of work a bit like that now. And I suppose it's not very necessarily very comicsy, but. Um, that's just how the way the way I feel comfortable, and I wanted to make sure that I was getting it right because yeah. clearly somebody else's project, and you know, although I was developing the visual side of it, you know, I wanted to make sure that they were happy. So giving them a few options to choose from, and the fact that you can hybridize from those and sort of like say, yeah, a little bit of you know, part A with maybe the arms of C and all the rest of it. And okay, I get you. So the the, the characters do differ slightly in design between each other as well, don't they? Yes. So, so you got yeah. different hood, different hoods, almost like yeah, different sort of styles of goggles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, we're imagining, I guess, that, that you know each of the characters has specialised options and stuff like that that they want to look like. And it was just this idea that even when you see them on mass, they they probably look less like a a super kind of like fascist police force and yeah. more like a, a a gang of like um, bounty hunters or something like that. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Oops. So there was um, that kind of. That team, it looks like a team up rather than a bunch yeah. of first uniforms. Yeah, like rather than a load of sort of Star Wars uh, stormtroopers, it's got that. Yeah, yeah. It, everyone's got a bit of character about them, which I like. I really like that. Exactly. And that, that appeals to us comic collectors, us OCD comic collectors. We've got to know who everyone is, don't we? Sometimes, yeah. you know. And it's the idea that you can tell who they are as well when they're in uniform. So, yeah. Because of the differentiations in uniform. So. Ideal. Yeah. And um, we talked about this earlier, but there's a little sort of pad area there um on the right yeah. the, the right of the page and that's kind of like an info pad is it is that the idea um i think well uh, when i designed because there was a little bit of text that needed to go on the front page which was explaining what the mission was like yeah. it was a report that had come through and i wasn't sure whether to just drop it in as if it was going to be left as a text box and just leave blank space for it so you know you kind of think back to sort of like the way that people show stuff sometimes when you remember comics from your youth and i just thought yeah why not get up a piece of kit that they can have that maybe brings up that information so i just kind of designed a piece of kit and so that that black dark space would have text on it in white as if it's yeah. received information but it's also you know narrative for the reader so i get you oh excellent let's have a look at another page and see what else we've got here so we've got this so this is much more organic this is um yeah much more at night time in shadow um creepy in the shadows sort of on another is it an asteroid they land on sort of thing is it 
Yeah, it's um, it's well, it's it's um, it was another piece. It's kind of like a, I suppose a a leading piece for the for the book that kind of sets the tone, and it, it's supposed to, I think, join up all of the. The, the idea behind this character who's going to appear in the background in some of the other images and sort of like, and yeah, um, and going to be the linchpin between all of the other stories, I suppose. Like the the crypt keep, keeper kind of character, is it? Yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, yeah. and, and so I was at Pat asked me if I'd want to sort of like do some of those pages for that. And, uh, so I kind of like took to, and I didn't want to go down the, the, the kind of, the same exactly i change my style every five minutes and it's awful and it makes <laughs> it looks good man it looks good. work with me and hire me and stuff like that because i i feel like i'm fairly fluid in my style although people still say they can recognize it as my stuff but it's um it, this i wanted to try that go that more philip drew year because there was these characters in there these kind of larger than life kind of evil beings and yeah. i really wanted to go down that kind of philip drew year yeah super, i can kind of crazy. see that totally man yeah I get that vibe immediately. Yeah, love. And I love that design of the spaceship there. Yeah, cool. amazing. And that was, that was fun again as well, just going through that process and sort of like sending designs and toying yeah. with it. And I even built a version of it in sort of like digital 3D and stuff like that. So. <laughs> they get their money's worth out of you, my friend. I'll tell you now. There you go. <laughs> so let's what else have we got here? Let's see what else we've got. So we've got this. So this is um a better vision of the, the sort of slightly bondage leather um, yeah, yeah. executioners, isn't it? They're... They are, they're a frightening, they're kind of like martial law, the next generation in a way to me. They've got that sort of cool. brutality to them, haven't they, you know? Yeah, well, I think it's that idea. I mean, I wanted to give them that kind of like, oh, kind of semi-gladiatorial look. And ah, okay. But like if they turned up on mass, they've got that kind of, again, sort of like, you know, the Mexican wrestler mask sort of like feel to them and stuff yeah. like that. But that whole you know, that you could imagine punching this guy in the chest and th them just not moving or taking any yeah. notice and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I totally get the gladiatorial thing there. You can imagine one of them whipping out one of those sort of gladiatorial nets and throwing it. You know, yeah. that, there's that element to them, isn't there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Great guns as well, man. That So love... I'd, I'd, I'd love to earn a Nerf gun like that. That would be my ideal Nerf gun, I think. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, again, I, I, did a, I did a series of designs and the design sheets and everything that I sent through are... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess they might see the light of day at some point. And yeah. um, the idea was that you have these things that can look like a long pistol, but then you can kind of throw them out, like, you know, John Wayne, Martini action style, and sort of like <laughs> they turn into a longer rifle sort of thing. So ah, and I was trying, okay. to, trying to picture out how that would work. And, and then again, I built a, a 3D model of it and to see if the, it would work and how it would lock. And yeah, um, I can see that in the design of the, the one on the left there. So that it, it yeah, yeah. clicks into an extendable barrel sort of thing. Yeah, that's brilliant. Right, yeah. Oh, mate, that's brilliant. Excellent. I mean, Love that. practically, this thing would never work, but we're talking future tech, so, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's comics, <laughs> my friend. Yeah, exactly. Good. That's excellent. Right. Now, I'm going to try and stop screen sharing now. Let's see how it goes. Cool. Um, stop sharing. And back to normal again. Does that work for you? Yeah, yeah, cool. Look at us. Genius. Excellent. So I know when Lisa says I'll do fifteen minutes, I always go longer. Always, Lisa. Sorry. Um, so what you what, so you're pretty much finished on this now. Are you is uh, is it in the can for you? Or are you just doing some um, edits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but both of the interior bits I've done and the bit for the title page is now done, and um, the covers all done front and back. Lovely. Um, so yeah. So did that's... you work on the cover then? Is that the cover part of your your job on this? I, I was the colorist on that. Yes. Yeah, so ah. Did, okay. I did the, digital paint on the cover so mike donaldson um did this excellent drawing and and um we've got all the characters and everything taking sort of like all the characters from across all the stories and yeah. putting them together for a sort of like a kind of a collage of them standing together um that, that goes around the front and the back of the, of the book and um and then yeah i was lucky enough to be asked to do the paint job on that so real nice one man and so you're on to what's it you're working on now is it uh, flintlock you're on now are you yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm finishing some pages for uh, first part of Flintlock, uh, book five. And who's the writer on that? Uh, sorry? Who's the writer? Uh, that's Steve Tanner for Time Bomb Comics. So. Marvellous Tanner in his jackets. Yeah, Love yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah he's a good egg. Book, uh, and then I'm doing, a, I'm doing a project with a museum, so his, another historical comic book um, about a bunch of kids solving a kind of a history crime. So. Nice. 
brilliant man i love your work I, we've always we've always marveled at your work my friend and we, you were a no-brainer for this project as soon as we saw it we knew it was going to happen and then i think that is one of the most viewed posts on the awesome comics podcast page is uh pat looking at your drawings which did like, everyone was like hugely proud that a uh, a member of the community was uh in our working with pat brilliant stuff man oh, yeah. yeah um so where can people find you online um, you can find me on Twitter really easily, um, although I'm, I'm a bit quiet on social media at the moment, just because I'm working on stuff that you can't show anybody. That's yeah. the nature of the people, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Um, although I do post a lot of sort of like, I suppose, you know, D&D style images and stuff like that. Um, you can find me on Twitter. So that's at Hesir, at H-E-S-I-R. Um, and then if you go there, you can find me on everywhere else. So that, that cool. links to everything else. So. And you've got, is it ironshodapecomics.wordpress.com? Is that when yeah, you're... Yeah. Yep. Iron Shot It, um, yeah, at WordPress. Uh, sorry, dot, wait, yeah, you can, I think if you put in ironshotape.com now, you can go straight there. So that's yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Iron Shot Ape will find me. Um, Robot V Monster will find me. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, man. So if you're bored, this is. You're bored, you just invent a new company name, don't you? So that's, yeah, that's I know. Oh, I'm rubbish. I'm, apparently Vince tells me I'm a brand now because I couldn't think of anything else, but there you go. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is brilliant. This is um, now we're in the final stages. Um, I'm busy on it every day and I know Lisa and Pat are super busy on it every day. I speak to them yeah. um, mostly every day about it. Um, watch this space. I'm going to say it now. We're trying to get Lisa on for the next episode. Um, she's <laughs> dodging me. Um, she'll hate that I've said that. Um, but if you want to see the other videos, and there are a series of them, um, Phil's done some as well um all with some great cracking craters go to millsverse.com or you can follow at millsverse on twitter and if you look for millsverse on youtube you can find these as well and there's a lot of stuff there there's a lot of stuff about pat talking about the project as well which is really interesting and how he's sort of gone about crafting these characters um down to the, you guys on the art down to vince on the design so it's um it's a real community project. Everyone's in it to win it. Um, and it's any any day soon, uh, any week soon, it will be out and uh, be in your hands, hopefully. So and thanks again. To the rice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good man. Yeah, apart from Cliff Cumber, obviously. The, uh, <laughs> we love Cliff. The, uh, good. Thanks, Gareth, man. And I'll see you soon. I know, yeah. Take All it right. easy.